Today, we'll be talking about Zephyr Squad inside of Jira Cloud. Zephyr Squad is a plugin that sits directly inside of your Jira ecosystem. It can be viewed on cloud on the left-hand side. When we click on Zephyr Squad, it will bring us to the test case library. The test cases in the test case library can be organized through folders. These folders can have multiple levels and be embedded. There's no limits to the amount of folders that you have. You can organize your test cases into these folders using either drag and drop options, or if we wanted to edit test cases in bulk, we have that capability too. You also can create test cases in bulk. And if you would like, you can import test cases from a file. We can use Excel CSV to essentially allow us to map column headers from the CSV to the fields that are inside of Zephyr Squad. So you'll be able to see the left-hand side, the fields on my column headers, and the Zephyr Squad fields that I wanted to organize to. The test items themselves can be viewed like so. So we'll create a new test case. The test case itself, the only required field by default is the name. You do have a number of default fields that you can see, objectives, precondition, the status of the test case, priorities. You also have components, owner, estimated time, the folder it was put in, as well as labels. The more information section will be the custom fields. Custom fields have a lot of options inside of Zephyr Squad. Let's go and see the options for custom fields. The custom fields can be seen in the configuration section. We also have custom statuses and priorities that are available too. The custom fields can be whether they're text entry fields, drop downs that are single choice, drop downs that are multiple choice, but you can also do required custom fields. So we can force all of our users to follow the same standard and principle. So you can see that operating system is now a required field. So if I edit any existing test cases, or if I have to create any new test cases, it will require that the operating system field is um, enabled. Let's just go disable that quickly. There is also custom statuses that can be viewed, whether they're at the test case level, the test execution level, or the sprint level. I mentioned custom priorities too. And we also have environments, labels, and iterations, which are helpful for different reporting purposes at different scopes. Let's go back to the YouTube test case and let's look at the test script. The test script is how we dictate our test case inside of Zephyr Squad. The Gherkin can be written, so whether that's cucumber syntax, so that's the syntax of the given when then. But we also have the ability to do step-by-step, -step, which is my preferred. So we can simply say our step one, so given the browser is open, any data we want to interject as well as the expected result. But then we can start individually writing our test steps too. So the data would be username, password, and the expected result. I do like the text entry fields here because we can interject images for the expected result if you did want to give more of a descri describing factor, whether it's at the test step level or the result level. Execution, this test case has not no execution since we have not executed it yet. We'll be sure to execute a test case here. Traceability is how we link test cases to our requirements inside of Zephyr Squad. We can work and link directly through the UI where we will search for issues. 
So these are all of the different issues that are available inside of my project. But generally, I actually don't work off of the traceability tab when I'm linking a requirement to a test case. I generally like to work off of my boards. Our boards will be able to tell you the different options that it comes to Zephyr Squad. So you can see directly on the board item, so on this story item, if there's no test cases associated to them. And what we can do is either create a new test case or add an association directly from the UI. And what this does is the traceability will happen automatically. What we'll also be able to see is if there's existing executions here. So let me find a different story item. And on that story item, you'll be able to see if there's any Zephyr Squad test cases associated to it. And since I just enabled it, you can see directly on the issue type, the test cases that have been associated to it, as well as any sprints that have been executed as part of it. You can see the sprint status, the last execution result for these issues as well. And here's the history. I only executed it once. Let's go back to Zephyr Squad. And I'll show a previously executed test case before we continue. We'll choose the Gherkin test case to show the execution. The executions will be listed below. So you'll be able to see if there's one or multiple executions. On the executions, you'll also be able to see the execution date, who it was assigned to, executed by, if they tagged any of these environments or iterations, as well as the sprint or cycle it's been part of. You can see the issues and the execution type, if it's manual or automated. Let's go back to the test case library and go back to the YouTube test case. You do have the ability to add attachments at the test case level and the test step level, as well as the test cycle level, the sprint level, and there is comments and a change history visible too. Let's go and let's execute a test cycle now. And when we execute test cycles, that's essentially us executing a test case. So if we want to organize test cases in a sprint, that's really what the test cycle need is for. Let me reset the filters to the default view and we'll build a new cycle. Test cycles, just like test cases, test steps, and executions have custom fields as well as the default fields. Right now, I don't have any custom fields visible on the test cycles. So we're going to execute a sprint here. If there's any descriptions, folders I want to put it in, statuses, versions, iterations, anything like that, I can tag as well as custom fields too. Let's add test cases to this sprint. And what we'll do is we'll add the test case that we just created, as well as a couple of others. So we'll get Gherkin test case in there, as well as two API test cases. What we're going to do is we're going to assign these environments. We're going to assign these to myself as a tester and iter iterations. And let's execute this test case. Um, if I wanted to, for example, change the tester, so maybe I get sick at some point, and we definitely can do that. We can change the environment so we're not executing all of the same environment as well. Anything like that is capable. These sprints also have the ability to be tied to requirements themselves, so a story or anything alike. And then we do have attachments, comments, and history available for the sprints. Let's go to the test player, and let's execute this. So we have a couple of different test cases in this test player. These will all be executed like a manual execution. Um, what we can do is we can change the way these test cases are viewed. So if I want, I can change the view to be by environment. I could change the view to be by priority. Generally, that's what I do the most. But you can also organize it based off of tester or status, uh, component, or well as folder. I also like to enable the show only assigned to me so I don't accidentally execute test cases that are not as part of my needs. What we can do is we can execute these test cases at the parent level, at the test case level, or at the test step level. Once we start executing the test cases via the test steps, the status will change. 
So notice once we press pass, it automatically goes to in progress. If we ever get to a stage where it fails, it will automatically go to fail or it will change as well. For example, if you had a long test case and had multiple test steps, you can set all below executions to a value too. So if we wanted to change everything to blocked or failed or something like that, we absolutely can. Let's change this first test step to fail. And what we're going to do is create a defect. You can create whatever issue type that you would like. Mine, I'm going to create a bug or rather an error, but you could do story, task, subtask, anything alike. When we cre create this bug, it'll automatically get added to the boards in the backlog. And then if it's finished, it'll say done, for example, as part of my workflow. Gherkin test executions look a little different. As you can see below, you can see the given when then syntax that will follow the Gherkin or Cucumber report. One thing I can do is I can attach files directly on the test step level, or I can test files at the test case level as well as the sp uh, sprint level too. Let's go to the reporting functions now. There's over 13 different reports that are available. Let's go and look at the traceability report now. And in terms of the filtering capability that's available with Squad, there's a lot of great filtering capability too. You can utilize custom queries to filter based off of any of those fields or custom fields that I showed earlier. But what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with an issue filter. So I'm looking at stories in my filters. So if I did want to look at tasks, subtasks, I would just create a different filter for that need. I want to look at bugs that have been created, anything like that. But what this is going to show is our requirement to test case coverage. So my requirements are in stories, and you can see the test cases that are associated to them, the execution status, the environment, who was executed by, and if there's any issues or defects associated to that as well. What this also tells us is if these stories have no test cases associated to them, you can open them up and we can then create a, our test case from this requirement directly in order to get full scale coverage. So via that report, we can see that there was no test cases and then we could just create one directly in the UI like so. There's a lot of different filtering options like I mentioned earlier. So if we want to change to a execution report, we definitely can do that. We're looking at the apps project. And what we're going to do is we're going to change a custom query. So instead of looking at a test case or a test cycle, we're going to look at executions that were executed by myself specifically. So you can see the different execution progress, the we actually are complete. We have 28 completed and zero remaining. The execution results, the effort that was described, issues reported, and then more of the statuses via accumulation, as well as the coverage of these test results as well. There is a lot of different reports that are available though. Let's go and look at the number for execution reports. We have 12 different execution reports that give different views of the execution results too. So if we want to break it down based off of, of a lot of detail, we definitely can do that. Or you could, this will include you know step-by-step -step failures of the test cases too. Or if you just want to see high-level results of all the executions, that's an option as well. But there's many more reports beyond that that break it down into different views. And you can add all of these different filter criteria that make it easier. In terms of dashboards, there's a lot of great dashboards that are available too. Let's quickly go and look at the dashboards that are available. These dashboards, as you can see, can be private or public. So if I want to have my own personal dashboard, I want to have a team dashboard, anything alike, we can definitely do that. We're going to look at all of the different uh, execution reports that are available. So you can see the different results, the projects we want to look at. So we actually do have the capability to do the same custom query criteria that we did before. 
but just to show like the burn down report, test execution completed over time. There's a lot of different reports, essentially everything, most that was available during the uh, during the report section. Just gonna add one more here. But there's a lot of different uh, gadgets that are available. In terms of automation, automation is avail available through the API. And essentially, we have a very well-documented API, too. If we wanted to publish automation, I would utilize the automation's JUnit XML format. So essentially, it's like a two-stage pipeline where you'll run your automation result. I'll put those to a relative location and then pass those results to Zephyr Squad as part of that. So it's very, very easy to use this endpoint as well. Um, it's essentially, the, like I mentioned, a two-stage pipeline. We execute our test cases and then publish the results to Zephyr Squad afterwards. Let me show the automation with Zephyr Squad in Azure DevOps. I'm quickly going to go to my release, and I'll be able to show the pipeline. Generally, it can be a two-stage pipeline where we run our automated results, output the automated results to a relative location, and from that relative location, publish those results to Zephyr Squad utilizing the API. Let's go and see what those results look like inside of Zephyr Squad in the test cycle. Notice the test cycle builds an automated build. You can see all of the execution results for that test cycle. There's multiple test cases within it. Some have passed, some have failed, and they did fail for different reasons. If we want, we can also go into the test case itself to see those executions when they're tagged either with automated builds or manual builds. I hope this was useful and have a nice rest of your day.